Why I would not have done nip screening if given the chance again. This video is really important and I appreciate this creator sharing her perspective because I do agree there is a lot of marketing around at the moment selling different options of tests that you can do in early pregnancy. But I really don't think there's much of a nuanced discussion about why you might not want to do it. Don't get me wrong, I know that feeling. We live in a data hungry generation. We want to have as much information about our baby as we can get. But we really need to think about the impact of that information. I'm talking here about prenatal testing known as NIPT, non-invasive prenatal testing. And it has advanced a lot. There's a lot of different options. The commonest that people hear of is called the Harmony test, but there's other options. And they basically look for bits of your baby's DNA in your blood, which can screen for conditions like Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, and Patau syndrome. A large meta-analysis found that for these trisomies, sensitivity of the tests are typically above 99% and specificity is similarly high, meaning that you have few false negatives. But it's not perfect. Just like this creator, she unfortunately had a false positive, meaning that she was told she had a positive test, but it later turned out that her baby didn't have that genetic condition. NIPT is only offered on the NHS in certain cases. For example, if the initial screening shows that you have a higher chance of one of these conditions, or so you've got certain risk factors. For everyone else, it's available privately, and I understand it's available in lots of countries privately as well. So here are the pros and cons. So the pros of having one of these tests is it gives you a very early reassurance if your results are low risk of any of these conditions. And so that can mean reduced anxiety if you're particularly worried about it. Also, the benefit is it's just a blood test. It's not invasive, there's not risk to the pregnancy itself. On the other hand, these NIPT tests are not diagnostic. What that means is that even if it, the test comes back and tells you you've got a high risk of one of these conditions, you then need to go on to have a CVS or amniocentesis, an invasive test to confirm. Also, importantly to me, these tests don't test for everything. There are many, many thousands and thousands of rare genetic conditions or even structural anomalies that we still need scans for. And with all those other potential genetic differences, we're never going to know about them at the moment because most of these tests just aren't reliable for picking up those conditions. Some of them say they can pick up those rarer genetic conditions, but usually they've also got a high false positive rate. So when you know that there's the potential for both false positive and false negatives by having these tests, especially for less common conditions, it can mean that your worrying actually continues or even worsens. So another question to me is, is it worth it? Well, it really depends on your personal values, your financial situations. Here, often these tests can cost upwards of £500 if you're going to get them privately. And you need to think about what you would do with the results of these tests. Now, I would say going for NIPT testing is not necessary for everyone. Let me know what you think and what you opted for yourself.